Learning to swim has always been challenging. There are countless details you should consider as a beginner swimmer. Let me put your mind at ease. Swimming is not a rocket science. Anyone can acquire this life-saving skill. There are two scientific insights you should know before mastering your swim strokes. Watch this video to unlock the cool science behind the art of effortless and fast swimming. Welcome to the Dance Swim Lab, where we are debunking the myth that swimming is a rocket science. First, let's talk about buoyancy. Buoyancy is like magic in the water. It helps you float and stay afloat, even if you're not a great swimmer. Think of it like a helium balloon. When you let go of a helium balloon, it flies up in the air because it's lighter than the air around it. In the water, it's kind of the same thing. When you get in the water, the water pushes you up. There are three factors affecting buoyancy. Density, the shape of an object, and water displacement. First of all, let's figure out what density is. Density is basically how heavy something is for its own size. Let me explain it to you with this experiment. Let's put the piece of clay in the water and see if it can float. Its density is high, therefore it can float and start sinking right away. Let's see what happens with this plastic spoon if we put it in the water. Mr. Spoon's density is lower, but it's not enough to float for this object. What will happen with the next object when we put it inside of the water? Yes, that's right, it floats. The density of the turtle is smaller than the density of the water. That is why it stays up and doesn't sink. Did you know that we can float in the water just like a turtle? It is possible because the human density is lower than the density of the water. Let's talk about the shape or rather form of an object in the water. Let's take a piece of clay and submerge it in the water. It sinks. What if we give it another shape and put it back inside of the water? Let's make it the form of the boat and put it back inside of the water. It floats now. It means that the proper form allows our bodies to float naturally in the water. Similar to the clay, our bodies must adopt the proper form to float in the water. Just like a sculptor molds clay to create masterpiece, we need to mold our bodies into the proper form to float in the water. And once we get that form down, we can float like a boat floats in the water. Another factor to consider to understand buoyancy is water displacement. Any object inserted in the water displaces a certain amount of the water. The more water you displace with your weight, the easier it is for you to stay afloat. Let's take this vessel and put it inside the water. When we put the vessel inside the tank, we can see the water rising to this level. We will add more weight inside the vessel and see how the water rises with the additional weight. The water level rises even higher. The higher the water rises inside the tank, the more water the object displaces with its own mass. The more water the object displaces, the more buoyant it is. Let's connect the dots to summarize all that we have learned from the experiments and how it can help us to become better swimmers. The human body density allows us to float in the water effortlessly. The proper form of your body, position in the water, enables your body to displace enough water to be buoyant. Put on your swimsuit and goggles and join me in the pool for some exciting buoyancy experiments. Let's dive in and discover the science of buoyancy firsthand. The drill we are trying to perform today is called the buoy. Take a deep inhale with your mouth and hold it inside your lungs. Tuck your knees under your stomach as you jump up. Jump in the pool and grab your knees like a cannonball. You will sink to the bottom because of the gravity. Give yourself a moment and wait until your body starts emerging. Once you return to the surface, extend your arms and legs to get yourself into the floating position. If you want to learn how to float in 6 easy steps, follow the link in your upper right corner and watch the video. 
Note that you have to hold the air inside your lungs and remain your muscles as relaxed as possible while performing this drill. Welcome back to Dan Swim Lab. Now that we have figured that you could effortlessly float in the water, we have to find out what helps one move in the water. Your ability to move in the water is possible thanks to a phenomenon called water propulsion. Allow me to explain water propulsion to you. There is a brave turtle on a mission to cross the ocean and find the perfect beach to call it home, where it can live a happy life and enjoy being a turtle. How can this turtle make it possible? To get there, it needs to harness the power of the water and move forward, just like how you pedal a bike to make the wheels turn. This turtle has four webbed feet and uses them like a pro to propel itself through the water like a turbocharged speedboat. Even though you don't have four feet and they're not webbed, you can still turbocharge yourself through the water to find your own dream beach anywhere in the ocean. The secret to propulsion lies in alternating arm strokes and kicking your legs. Let me take you to the pool and show you how to unleash your inner torpedo. Using your arms to move in the water is known as pulling. You can move your arms one at a time or together to create propulsion. Pulling can be done while floating on your back or facing down in the water. The ability to propel in the water with the help of your legs is called kicking. Like pulling, it can be produced with both of your legs moving simultaneously or one at a time, on your back, side or facing down. Just like building with Lego blocks, you can create different swimming strokes by combining various kicking and pulling techniques. The ability to mix and match these techniques has resulted in four Olympic swimming strokes. Butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke and freestyle. Some institutions also include elementary backstroke and side stroke in this list. It doesn't matter what swimming strokes you are trying to perform. The key to creating propulsion in the water is coordinating arms and legs. And most importantly, effectively generating force to help you move through the water. If you are interested in learning how to swim, subscribe to my channel for more swimming insights and step-by-step -step tutorials. Watch the next video to know which swimming stroke is best for beginners. Thank you for watching and have a good swim!